Is there, do you have a USB stick? Uh, yes, I'm yeah. here. Okay. Right. Who does not have the data? Everybody has data? Everybody fired up cell profiler. Two different, you should have two different files. I send you a zip, so you have to unzip them, right, to get the file. How do I, wait, unzip? Yeah. Okay. So, I just did it on my desktop, but you can put it wherever you want. Okay. Tell me, um, let me know when everybody's uh, good. So what cell profiler is, and by the way, I didn't know anything about cell profiler four weeks ago, so <laughs> I'll understand your frustration if you have trouble. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a look, the GUI is not very good in my opinion, it's hard to tell what's going on, but it has two general parts. One is this part here where uh, you uh, give some rules about how it's going to name. It's going to assign a, uh, a name to each of your image files. This is all in there already, you don't need to do anything. I got an error message when I opened it. It says that it's an old version, and this is a new yeah. version of cell phone. Well, that always it's pops just up. that you can't say it, save it, so it works up, right? I can still run it, I just can't save and change anything to it. Really? Yeah. 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 But I have an extremely new version. You, you mean you can't save this? I think it just warns that that always pops up when you import that in my computer. Okay. Uh, okay, anyways. So this top part is for specifying the, the files. and, and um, no. Is that thing plugged in right um, Okay, and then the bottom part just consists of a series of operations that you might do yourself on each of the images, like, you know, uh, background subtract or, or uh, run a filter on the image or integrate or go hunt for nuclei or whatever. So th those are the, these are these modules, and we'll go through them in a second for what they're doing on this particular data set. So uh, the first thing is to go to images and load the data. So if you go to if you go to the file here with the data, you can just grab the images and just take them all and dump them into this gray box and they'll load. And if you go to this names and types thing and you hit update, you should see it should look like this. So that means it's successfully uh, associated each name in the pipeline with an actual file. I'm trying to move the file, but it's still not the room. Can, can you just grab it and drop it into the gray? So yeah. just highlight it in the finder? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, I'm trying to bring it. Yeah. Maybe here? Yeah. 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 <coughs> so I, I don't need to bring here. Oh, you need to be, you're in the wrong, you're on, you're on, in the wrong page. Of so, so go to images, go to, go to the very top, and yes. click on images. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. dump it into that gray box. I have one, two, three, four, five tips. I'm sorry, there's five tips that came up in mine. Four. Two, then you get the wrong folders. The other one, you want the cell-ish. Wait, what? There's one called cell-ish and one. Are you dropping? Uh, I only got one and one. Oh, you need right. it here. We have it here. Let's download the other. Workshop. I thought I had both. Yes. 
then, um, uh, okay, so, so we'll start with the same actual way. I don't know, we try to close all this. This is rotation. So the one you send is only for tissues. <coughs> so the one you send, that one has only the tissues. Yeah. So the which side. one is the one I just uh, I have on? Because this one is the tissue. Okay, so this one is the tissue? These are all the tissues. Yeah, you're looking at all the tissues. Yeah, you're looking at all the tissues. Yeah, you're looking at all the tissues. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what it could look like. I'm just going to take this one right now, just in case, while it's in here. Right? <coughs> yeah, you just need the two zip files, and then you just click on Well, there. I have one zip file, but it's got a different name. So there should be one that's called cellish, and one that's called tissue-ish. I think I signed on the tissue. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why the zip just... Okay, I got it. You got both of these? And it sh shoot me back the, the USB drive. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so should we go quickly through what the modules are doing? So, so, you, so you can see and then we'll run them. By the way, the little eye over here, um, so each of the modules when it runs will pop up a separate window that allows you to evaluate, you know, just visually evaluate what happened when that operation took place. In general, it gets annoying to have all those windows, so if you close the eye, it just means it's not going to show you the window. If you open the eye, it's going to show you the window. So I, I've left only a couple of them open that I think are particularly useful. Okay, so the identified primary objects is uh, a general uh, operation in the profiler that looks for objects of a particular size in a grayscale image. And it has uh, several settings, uh, how you want to uh, uh, background subtract, so, so the, the threshold, excuse me, threshold is the data first. So. Uh, the cell profiler has a bunch of different options for this, and if you go over here and cell profiler to the question mark and click on it, you'll get a complete description of what the options are. And that's true for almost every uh, you know variable you set cell profile. That's that's useful. Um, so you can go through this and look at what the other uh, uh, deal is. And by the way, at the top it's just a, there's an annotation about what each of the modules is doing. Okay, so any, anyways, it's going to look for things that are between two, 20 pixels and 220 pixels. It's going to threshold according to the O2 method. And it does something where it tries to uh, fill holes afterwards by, by a geometric operation, uh, shrinking and expanding the, the, the object, which you, uh, I'll, I'll, I can send you a place to look it up in Wikipedia with the, the algorithm it uses, but I'm gonna skip through that right now. So the, this first thing here is taking the DAPI image, which you specified up here, and it's just finding nuclei. Okay, so that's the zero order thing, right? Okay. Uh, and this is just saving the, the nuclei objects. So in, 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 in we're, down here we're saying save the nuclei outlines, okay? And and create a new object. So create an object called nuclei. So you can do the find objects on the DAPI file, you're gonna create a new object called nuclei, and you're gonna save the nuclei outlines. And uh, under save images, you're saving this, this data object nuclei. And what that is, is a, is a, a picture that has the same number of pixels as the original DAPI image. But all the pixels that have been assigned to a given nucleus, the, their pixel value is set to the index of that nucleus. So nucleus 30 is going to, every pixel that's assigned to nucleus 30, the pixel value, which should normally be the intensity of the signal, is set to 30. Does that make sense? So that allows you to go back in MATLAB or R and other operations and figure out where cell 30 or nuclei 30 was located, because all of the pixels that were assigned to it are going to be number 30 in this nuclei object. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's all this. So you, that's what you're saving there. This this step right here, all it's doing now, you're going to use the puncta, the cloud of puncta, to help you to find the cell boundaries. So all this step is doing is summing the images. There are only two channels here, but if you have more, you sum all of your puncta to get a cloud, and you're going to use that cloud to define the actual cell that's around the nucleus. Okay. Identify secondary objects is related to primary objects, uh, but it takes a seed. So you tell it which primary object you want to use as a seed, in this case it's nuclei, and it's going to grow the primary object out to a boundary. And, and, and it takes multiple things into account. You should, you should read about it if you like, but it, it basically uh, it tr it tries to keep the assigned um, uh, nuclei uh, assigned to the closest seed object, and, and it doesn't let, object, it doesn't let the, the cell boundaries overlap each other, and it has uh, continuity constraints and so forth. But it's trying to find a uh, basically a rubber band around the clouds that it can assign to each nucleus that uh, makes sense. 
because and, and there are a number of parameters that you need to set. Uh, uh, again, you have a thresholding uh, uh, choice and um, Yeah, you should you should check this out. There, there's there there are smoothing corrections. It's not actually super sensitive to any of these. Uh, whereas the primary objects is very sensitive to the object size that you specify. This one is is, is less sensitive. Okay, so then you're going to do the same thing as you did with the nuclei. You're going to save the cell uh, image where the each pixel assigned to a cell is going to have that cell index number, which is the same as the nuclei uh, nuclei nuclei index number. Um, the enhancers and oppressed features applies a filter to the data to uh, extract objects that have a particular shape and, 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 make, and enhance those and, and suppress background that does not have that shape. And this is extremely sensitive to the feature size. So the feature size is the number of pixels that's the diameter of the features you're looking for. And when it, so that's gonna, it's gonna look for objects or, or maxima that have roughly a five, um, uh, five by five pixel uh, footprint, okay? And it's going to enhance those guys, and it's going to suppress any more even background that doesn't have structure on the five by five level, okay? And it's called this is a uh, it's related to something called Laplacian of Gaussians, and if if you want to uh, read about the, the the actual transformation that it's doing, uh, anyway. So this uh, this sharpens the image for this data set. It's not really even necessary because the data is so clean, but um, I've left it in. Okay, so now, now it's going to do, a, we're doing another round of identified primary object. And this one is like the nuclei, except we're looking for much smaller things. We're looking for things that are between one and five pixels. Does that make sense? And this one is taking the data channel. It's taking the red channel up here. The red channel has been filtered. That, that, so the, the, the uh, enhanced image, let me go back to here for a second. Enhanced or suppressed features uh, took the red channel, the raw red channel, and created something called red channel filter that you saved here. And speckles is the, the type of the transform. Uh, okay, uh, so here it's taking the filtered red channel and it's just looking for intense uh, features that are between one and five pixels in diameter in the, in the filtered red channel and saving those and assigning those indices. So it's, it's very similar to going and looking for the nuclei, except that they're much tinier objects you're trying to find. Does that make sense? And th this is critical to set, and so depending on how you, your, your magnification and how you set up your microscope, you will have to adjust these pixel values to correspond to roughly the size of plankton, uh, which will be different depending on the details of how you've collected your data. And you can, you can figure that out by just looking at the raw data and, and seeing how many pixels does a plankton typically occupy. Makes sense? So you, you will have to adjust these numbers. Uh, okay, gray to cover, uh, color just overlays several channels onto one image. And I set this up where the uh, red channel is assigned to the data, and the, uh, the green channel is assigned to the outlines of the blobs that you just uh, discovered. And the reason I did that is that if the outline of course, uh, covers the data correctly, it should look yellow. So you should be, basically, if, you, if everything went well, you should have the red data overlaid with a yellow assignment outline, and the, and the collective thing should be yellow. If there's red that has that's not yellow, that means that data was not assigned as a punto. And if you see uh, green with, that's not yellow, that means there was an assignment in the absence of data. And I'll show you two examples of what that looks like in this data set. Does that make sense to you guys or not? I can, uh, actually, I can say it again louder. No, but it, it, I, can, I can explain it again if it's unclear. Well, you'll, you'll see it better, it's better just to show by, by doing it. Okay, and, the, and the, then the same exact process happens for the second and the next three, that, the same process for the green channels down here, okay? The relate objects is just assigning puncta within each cell to that cell and, and, the, and the corresponding nuclear, nuclear index. And that's how you can tell which puncta belong to a cell so that you can do per cell calculations as opposed to per puncta calculations. Does that make sense? So it's just, it's just setting up a matrix that relates back um, particular puncta to, a, to an, an individual cell that, that, um, in whose boundary that puncta was situated. Uh, so there's a, there are two here for the two channels. Uh, and then measure object intensity goes and takes every punctum and calculates geometric features about it. It calculates an intensity, it calculates it's the, how, how wide it is, 
calculates a bunch of its average, its max, et cetera, that, um, for the punctum, and saves all that data, most of which is useless. But, but you have that information if you want to, to go process it later. So for example, instead of counting puncta, if you want to just integrate the total signal, that will be incorporated in, in this data set because, be, uh, um, because of this step of measuring the object intensities. And, and these are each applied to the, to the red channel. And so the, 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 this is the raw data channel. And these are uh, red blobs means the uh, boundaries that were assigned to, as red blobs, red puncta. And, and you do the same thing here with the green. You look at the green channel. You take the G blobs, which are the G puncta that were assigned by this uh, discovery process, and integrate their signal. Uh, finally, this is just a composite image of the red channel, green channel, and the DAPI. I'd like you to look at what you know what the the data on top of the DAPI looks like. Uh, overlay outlines takes the uh, data and it overlays the blobs onto the data. Um, and you'll see in a moment what that looks like, and it shows the nuclei in yellow. So it's going to show the red assigned puncta as red. It's going to show the green assigned puncta as green objects on top of the data, and it is going to show the nuclei in blue, and it's going to show the cell outlines in yellow. And you'll see in a second uh, what that looks like. Uh, it saves that composite image, and then it exports all the information to a spreadsheet, a common separated value from the spreadsheet that you guys can use. Okay? So that, that's the process. And we'll, we'll, let's just go through it, and I think it'll be easier when you actually see the images that, are, that emerge. So uh, one last thing is and with Cell Profiler, you want to click on this View Output Settings deal here. And you want to specify uh, where you want your default default output folder to be. This is where all the output of the cell profile is going to be sent. So I have mine set to ish cell, but you guys should probably set it to the same folder that the data came in. And unless you, if you guys like to work in MATLAB, uh, cell profiler was written in MATLAB, and you can output all the information as a MATLAB file, which is very convenient. Is that something you're familiar with? It's not. If you don't, this last setting, you don't want to get to output a MATLAB file. Okay, we all set. Okay, so to run, to actually run a process, uh, you can do it in in this thing called test mode, where it runs processes one at a time, and that's really helpful for debugging at the beginning. So if you just click on start test mode. Uh, okay, so uh, it, it hasn't executed anything yet, and to execute, you say you click the step button. So the first thing is going to be identify primary objects. So you should get an output that looks like that. And you should look. And so here's another thing in Cell Profiler that's helpful. I'll wait till everybody has this image. Peter, can you tell me? Yes, sir. What is it running? It, it, it can't open the output files at the bottom. Also, when you do this step, I think you want to have the top function highlighted because uh, it, it tries to go down um, wherever you're currently situated. Okay. Okay, and then click step to, to have it execute the first function. So when you look at data in Cell Profiler, there are a couple things that are useful. I mean, let's take this image for a second. If you click Control and click on this image, you get the option to open image in a new window. Okay, so let's do that. And you can blow this image up. You can make it really large, okay? And you're going to see the DAPI signal, and you're going to see better how it's assigned to nuclei. And if you want to make the nuclei smaller or larger or whatever, you can, you can look at this and go back and adjust the parameters and run that again. Okay. The other thing that's useful is, is to change how it's scaling the data when it, when it uh, renders it. And so if you click Control again, and you click on the image, uh, oh yeah, under Image Contrast, it'll normally say Normalized. If you go to Log Normalized, you can see background features that are hard to see in the normalized data. So if you want to see more, if you want to log transform the, the data so that you can see little features and big features together in one image, this is really helpful. Okay. In some cases, you want just the plain normalize, sometimes the log normalize. But it is a useful tool to know about. I'm going to go back to the plain normalize here for a second. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, so that, that's the first step. So I'm going to close this because I'm, I'm done with it. And I'm going to close this one. You can keep it open if you like. Oh, and th these other panels here, so this is the raw data. This one up here is the raw data. This is the raw data overlaid with the outline of the nuclei that's assigned. And this is just, um, and when you have a lot of objects, it, it doesn't look this simple, obviously, but it gives you one image where it's taking each of the objects and colored it a different color. So if you have a lot of them collected, you can tell which, you know, which pixels are assigned to each because they're never going to be two of the same color adjacent to each other. All right, so that's done. So let's close this, and let's go back and step again. Uh, okay, so it didn't show anything, because this is, uh, I, I have the eyes shut for that next step, so it's not doing anything. Uh, it just saved that to your folder. It saved it, the nuclei assignments. This is the image mass step. I'm going to step it also. So it just summed all the two red channel and green channel into one uh, cloud, okay? Now we're going to do an identify second, secondary object. So I'm going to hit step once more, and we're going to get a window. Okay. And up here again is the summed punkta from the channels. And when you collect a lot of data, there'll be a ton of them, right? Um, this is just two. And this down here is the cell boundaries that it assigned. And, and it has the nuclear boundaries in green and the cell boundaries in in pink. And if you, so this is probably the most useful one to look at. So again, open image in your window, blow it up, and you know, analyze it. And, and, and again, if, if useful, you can normalize the, the transcripts and see you know, the stuff that it assigned, the stuff it didn't assign, what fell inside each cell. Got it? That makes sense? Should we wait here or are we ready to move forward? This. Okay, so we're going to go back and step again. Uh, that's just another save. Uh, I'll get rid of this. And I'm going to step again. And this form, that did the, the filtering. You can turn the eye open if you want to see what the filtering looks like. Uh, okay, so now we're going to do an identify primary object. So now we've assigned the nuclei, we've assigned the cells, and we're going to go look for pump death. So if you hit step, you get the same kind of output here. So again, this is the raw data. This is now only the red channel. And it's showing the assignments here, the outlines that it's assigned. And it's showing, again, this is the color image where each different punk of an assigned is in a different color. So this is nice, but it's not super useful. The next step will give you an image that's really, you're going to see really clearly what happened, how, how did the assignment. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to close this for the time being. And I'm going to hit step once more. OK. and. Okay, so this is now what's called the overlay, where I, where I made a, I took a bunch of grayscale images and made an RGB image, where the data is in red, and the punctum assignment boundaries are already green. So the key one to look at is this one in the lower right. So if you say Control uh, Open Image in the Window, she gets something that looks like this. I'm going to really blow this up so you can see what's going on. So what you can see, first of all, is that everything's yellow here. So there's a perfect coincidence of the, which won't be true in the next, in the green channel, but there's a perfect coincidence of uh, assignment of puncta with the actual data. Everything is, is, is yellow. And if you go to, I'm not sure if there's anything interesting to be seen here. No, so yeah, it doesn't matter. You contrast it. Okay. So that looks great. Okay. Now the green will look uh, somewhat different. Okay. So. Are we set or is there, are, do you guys want to move forward or not? Yeah. Okay, so hit step again. And uh, that just ran the, fil the filtering process on the green channel. Hit step again, and you get a new window here. And, and so this is, again, the overlay. No, no, sorry. This is the identified primary object. So it's like the raw data, the assignments, and the multicolor, the rainbow picture, uh, which I'm going to close. And we're going to go again to the, the so-called gray to color, which does the overlay. So now if you open this guy, okay. if you over, uh, open this guy, and, um, you're going to see some um, uh, different stuff here. So uh, first of all, and I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to change the contrast to log normalized. So first of all, you can see that there's data here, 
there's red signal here that didn't get assigned to any uh, pump deck. And that's because it fell below the threshold, or had the wrong shape, or was uh, touching the boundary of the image. So this isn't got, got all eliminated. You'll also see cases here that look kind of greenish, like this guy up here, uh, which you should be able to find your screens. And that just means that it assigned a pump dump to some that something had marginal signal. So the red channel was weak there, so the sum of those two looks greenish. Does that make sense? So, you, so green features here just mean it made an assignment, but the data wasn't super strong. And the rest of this stuff uh, is the uh, it, 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 it is the yellows the assignments, and some of these yellow guys, the punctum are bigger in this channel. So in some cases, you can see the outline with some red in the center, which is the you know that's the assignment with the red in the center. And systematically, the, which, which one is the green channel? Side five. Wh which fluorophores are always fatter? Fatter punctum. Fatter or Sci fi. So on our confocal, on both of the confocals we collect the data on, the sci fi channel gives fatter punk test. So you can take the same uh, plish experiment, high bond psi 3 imager oligos, you see really fine dots, high bond psi 5 imager oligos, and you get these fat blobs. And presumably it is kind of chromatic aberration in the microscope, so that the they're out of focus, the, the sci fi guys. But that's a, a general feature of all these data sets. Um, does anybody still have the? Uh, well, let me go back. Um, anyway, so this is how you this is how you evaluate the quality of the assignments. Um, okay, but let me go back here. Uh, one thing I, I omitted. Um, I'm going to go back to this first primary object. So I'm going to move this back up here, and I'm going to hit step again. So, so one one thing I gloss over here quickly is it gives you information about uh, what what it did here. So it, it assigned 205 pumped up in this particular image, okay? And if I step forward to the, uh, where are we here? Okay, and, so the, and this is for the green channel, and the green channel had a lot more pumped up because it was a better probe, and it assigned 595. So it assigned an 800 pumped up total. And there are uh, like four and a half cells. So it's roughly 200 punctum per cell. And this is this this data is uh, PP one uh, A, right? So and if you look at the FPKM values of PP one A, it's 200 for HCP one one six cells. So that's what you would expect. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. Let's continue stepping forward. These related object steps are not particularly useful right now. Oops, sorry. Um, okay, and the, the, these are the steps that measure the object intensity. And this one now is giving a composite picture. Uh, oh, this, this is just the data. You can blow this up if you like, but this is the data, the red and green data channels superimposed on the DAVI. Uh, and the next image it generates. Oh, okay, so this one is is the overlay image. So again, this is probably worth opening up. And again, so you can see the assigned green puncta, the assigned red puncta, the yellow outlines corresponding to the cells, and the blue outlines corresponding to the nuclei. Make sense? Okay. And we didn't write a R script for this particular, we can send one out, I guess, but for to open up this data set, to open up the comma separated value file. But in that file, you can then associate the puncta with the cells and calculate whatever statistics you want for those puncta. Uh, you know, how many puncta are on average are included in each cell for, on a per cell basis, how many puncta do they have? So if you do this for 10,000 cells, you can construct a distribution for that gene of, copy of puncta per cell. Um, All right. So, does that make sense? Is there any? Are there any questions about what the modules are doing? What, one thing is, if it's unclear, um, if you want to see what the smoothing operation is doing, then open the eye on that operation, and it'll show you explicitly what the image looks like before and after. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to do you want to do the tissue one? You you set it up. Well, actually, I can. Yeah, you can do it. It's yeah. the same. It's uh, the same. Okay. It's just gonna have it. Okay. All right, so we're all good at this, right? 
Okay, so now we're going to load a new pipeline. So when you go to the top, you say file, import pipeline, file, and we are going to go to fish tissue. I'm also going to delete all of this stuff. Okay, so if you, if you hit, if you highlight them, hit Control, you can remove from file list. And I'm going to go to the dish tissue, and I'm going to grab. You want all these four, right, Monica? I'm going to dump those in there. Okay. Again, here you when you say view output settings, you want to set um, right. You want to set this to be probably ish ish uh, tissue now. So I have to search. Go to uh, names and types. So actually, so images, you click on there, you see that the data is there, the names and types, and click update to make sure everything's happy. And what will happen here is if, it, if it's not happy, there'll be some like egg or may not have a file associated with it. And, and you set these rules. So if you collect your data on, the, on your confocal and you're systematically naming different channels, a particular name, uh, and you have a bunch of folders or a, 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 um, you do it by folders in general, right? Uh, then, then you make one rule set. It's four images? It is four. Five, sorry, five. The, the image files that we're importing, are they the raw files? They are the raw channel? They're the raw files for each channel. Okay. So this time when we go through it, let's just hit the steps and then I'll describe as we go through the data what each step is doing. Uh, should we just open all the eyes? Maybe we should just open all the eyes so you guys can see what's going on. This one. So everybody just open all the eyes on your screen and we'll just step through it and then we'll delete the windows as we go. Okay, so everybody see that? Okay, so this is again a filter step. Uh, in, but instead of, uh, uh, of, of enhancing really tiny, tiny speckle features, this is enhancing features that, for this tissue sample, are roughly the size of the nucleus. So again, depending on your field of view, depending on the objective lens you use, depending on how the camera is set up, you have to figure out like roughly how many pixels in the nucleus in order to do these uh, uh, filters. So let's just go into start test mode and step. Okay, and so on the left is before the filtering, and on the right is after the filtering. The intensity it looks lower on the right, but it's a little cleaner. The features are a little cleaner. Okay. All right. 
By the way, if I'm going too fast, just stop me. Okay, so the next thing is just, again, one of these identify primary object steps. Okay, so, uh, so this is what the intel looks like, the results look like. And it's trying to find nuclei based on the DAPI signal. So if, if you look at the identified primary objects, I'm going to go back. Uh, to be clear, it used um, uh, the filtered blue. That's what you call the DAPI. Oh, sorry, the, so I want you to go back for a second. When we did an enhanced and suppressed feature, we started with the DAPI channel. Mm -hmm. And after we, fil after we applied the filter, it's called filtered blue. In this particular, you can name it whatever you like. In this particular uh, pipeline, it was named filtered blue. So then when you go to identify the primary objects, it's taking the filtered DAPI channel. It's going to call the objects nuclei is looking for things that are between 11 and 26 uh, pixels. So by the way, that pe the previous filter, you, you, I didn't write this section of the pipeline, but the previous filter is actually suppressing things that are smaller than six, uh, objects that are smaller than six pixels. So it's smoothing out things that are on the six pixels scale. Here it's looking for larger objects that are between 11 and 26 pixels. Uh, and again, this is, this, this is uh, how you want to smooth the data before you Search. Okay. Anyways, uh, right. So let's go back to here. And I have yeah. A mm -hmm. So when you select the the pixel range, right? Is it uh, based on? Oh, I just see that it's diameter. Yeah. And what one nice thing that's about the yeah same yeah. not radius, but what nice thing about cell profile is you can click the question mark next to every module, and it has a pretty thorough description of what the options are and what's okay. So in this particular case, I would probably pick this one. And take a look to see how I well I thought it was on the nuclei. And again, one job and do is polygon wise. So for this step, you <coughs> the two the two places where you may have to adjust parameters for your particular data are in the application of the filter and on the uh, uh, identify primary objects. And again, the dimensions of the objects are the most critical parameters. All right, so we're done. Identify nuclei. Uh, this is, okay, so then we um, step again. So this is an example where it's measured uh, properties of the of the nuclei. And let me explain why I set it up this way. So when you identify primary objects, you have the option to eliminate objects that don't look like they're the right shape, and to eliminate objects that are close to the boundary of the image, that are touching the boundary of the image. However, there's a danger to doing that. So the, the general game plan here is going to be identify the nuclei and then identify the cells using the nuclei as the seed. So it's going to be identified primary object, and then the cell is going to be a secondary object that's seeded by the yeah. nucleus. If I have something that is like a messed up nucleus next to a, a legitimate nucleus, if I don't retain the messed up guy, the uh, identified secondary objects is going to expand the cell into the neighboring messed up cell. D does that make sense? So there's a little bit of this is a little more complicated than it needs to be because I've retained the crappy objects until you're done identifying secondary objects. And then after the fact, I'm going to go and ID the nuclei that looked wrong and I'll eliminate data that was assigned to those nuclei. This, this, so it's a little convoluted, but it's there because when you identify the cell, you don't want bad cells screwing up the cell assignments. So okay. you can actually manually remove some. Yeah, so I did it. Or like manually add on if you know. I, well, I do it in MATLAB or in R. So basically, I, I know what the dimensions of the, in this case, what I'm, um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm getting rid of things on the basis of the radius. So this is mean radius over all of the nuclei, but what this will do is record for each of the nuclei, nucleus is size. Mm -hmm. That's actually area, I'm using area. And nuclei that don't fall within the area bounds, I eliminate when I post-process the data out of self-profiling. Okay. 
let's say, okay, I, uh, that was a bad nucleus, it was retained to help assign cell boundaries, but any data that's associated with that object, I'm going to get rid of it because the nucleus was not shaped. It was not the right design. Okay, so that's what this thing is doing. It's measuring the nuclear shape and, and, and geometry so that after the fact, I can eliminate nuclei that don't look good. All right. Um, okay, that was the same image of that thing. Uh, Okay, so this is now identifying the secondary objects, and the one that's probably useful is this one, the lower. Okay, and so in this case, the, uh, I don't know why we used green, but in this case, the, the uh, nuclei are in green, and the assigned cells are, uh, objects are bounded in. And what you can see here, Tushar alluded to this this morning, uh, in the case of the lung, there are cell types in the alveoli that look like Swiss cheese. And if you ever see one of these, it's amazing. It's like a cell that has a ton of holes going through it. Like they're enclosed, so that topologically the cytoplasm is still enclosed, but it has a ton of, ton of holes going through it. There is no way, uh, even if you have a great memory marker, there's no way you're going to figure out what the boundaries of that cell is three-dimensional boundaries. The only way you can do it, I think, if you have really weird shaped cells, is if you do if you uh, do sparse labeling. So if you have a, a, a prelox that turns on a GFP, for example, a cytoplasm GFP, and you give tamoxifen at low doses so that a subset of the cells are labeled, in those cases you can use the prelox expression to define the boundaries of a given cell. In that case you can get unambiguous boundaries. But in general you cannot. Unless you have, you know, I, I, I know in the alveoli you're screwed, unless you have like sparse labeling. So, uh, what, what we do is when, when we do the expand nuclei, we use a different uh, option in cell profiler which just expands the nuclei by a couple pixels, unless it runs into another nucleus. And so, what you're doing is you're collecting all the tungta that are either inside the nucleus or are perinuclear. And as you'll see, when you, when you go ahead and make the heat map, that's good enough, at least in lung, it's good enough. Uh, and and it, it's entirely possible that you are integrating or sampling a subset of all the pumped up. But as long as you're looking at, at um, genes that are uniformly distributed over the cytoplasm, even if you look at a subset of the cytoplasm, you should be okay. Uh, alternatively, if there are genes that are not uniquely, that, that are like uh, enriched in the uh, around the nucleus or enriched further out in the cytoplasm, if you're consistent about your definition when you go to do the heat map, uh, the relative patterns of gene expression for different cells should be conserved. Do, does it, you know what I'm saying? It's like you don't necessarily have to hit every single punctum unless you want the absolute value of the expre of expression in that cell, rather than a pattern of relative expression that allows you to identify the cell. All right. Um, uh, okay. So the next thing is just saving again the. Um, Why did I do the second one here? Oh, don't worry about it. You, you, you must have stepped ahead, but do, don't worry about it. it um, it's just that when, you, when you're in the step mode, it doesn't output the data, because it thinks you're just testing, and you're going to go back and adjust the parameters. So now I have to remember why that. Okay, this is another, uh, this is actually, so I do the secondary objects twice, and it's because of a bug in Cell Profiler. Um, you don't need to know the D, well, the problem is if you delete, if you assign secondary objects, so the nuclei have indices, okay? And those, if you use those as, as uh, seeds and you create and you create cells, it inherits the index from the nucleus. So the nucleus 30, the cell around it is cell 30. Um, but if you delete the, the nuclei, the, excuse me, if you delete the secondary objects based on any criteria, the indices get changed. So I do one find secondary objects where I get rid of cells that are problematic, and I do another one where I don't get rid of them. 
and it, it's so that when I go in post process in R or in uh, MATLAB, uh, I can both figure out the correct relationship between nuclear index and cell index, and also I can know which of the cell uh, which of the cells uh, cell profile I thought was problematic. I, I, I'm sorry, this is a convoluted, but it's 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 because cell profilers got this kind of bug. Um, that that's why there are two fine secondary objects. Anyway, okay, so it saves, save the cells. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Okay, at this point I am removing objects that, I'm removing the problematic nuclei. And I think this is only to create an image, uh, an output image. I don't think it's used for any data collection. But this filter step is just saying uh, jettison nuclei. So take, take the nuclei that been, have been assigned. Take the data from the measurement step. So back up here, remember, measure object size. And it's saying uh, apply to the measurements, eject nuclei whose uh, area is not doesn't fall between these two values. And so those are, those are nuclei that have the wrong area get rid of them, filter them out. And I'm only doing this step, I think, to create an image in a subsequent step. Um, this is a similar operation for cells, which uh, is basically, I'm doing this to get rid of cells that touch the boundary of the, of the object, of the, of, the, of the image. OK, so then we have an overlay outline. Okay, so in this image, it has eliminated uh, cells and nuclei that are problematic. So this is like a cleaned up image, whereas the one that we looked up earlier had retained all of the problematic Um, okay, and the next the next set of steps is applying a threshold to the data before you integrate the pump code. So it's just it's just uh, and, and it's using its own algorithm, uh, it's an automatic algorithm within Cell Profiler to uh, determine the threshold to uh, to, um, to cut the data at before you start integrating. So setting everything below the threshold to zero, and. Uh, again, you can. There are a bunch of options here for how the threshold is determined, so you can uh, choose uh, as you like. In the um, identify puncta uh, pipeline that we went through earlier, that was adapted from another lab, and they used an absolute threshold so that anything that was below 20% of the maximum signal is set to zero. Uh, everything we've done with cells that we've done, we just used the automatic thresholding uh, algorithm. Okay, so it does all the thresholding to each of the data channels. Uh, then just the measure object intensity. And finally, it exports all the information to uh, a, spread, a spreadsheet. Okay. So now, for you guys to go on to the next step to analyze this data and perform the heat map, um, I'm, um, uh, we, we have to actually run it not in step mode. We have to actually run it in real mode. So I'm going to go back up to the top. And I'm going to exit step mode, test mode, excuse me. And I would also make sure that in each tissue, there's nothing written here that, because uh, it won't overwrite files. So make sure that wherever you're writing your output to, the files don't exist. And then just let it rip by uh, clicking Analyze Images. Okay. Why is it? So you guys should do this on your own computers also, so you have that. You already did, you've already done it. Yeah. And it, it always is a little slow at the very beginning, but then a little accumulating like, windows as it goes. Monica, do you know why it's doing this? Does it? 
bring the test and the state of the Sorry, but it's the same Same error. Mm -hmm. Yours was okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, but did it show? Did the file show up in the right place? Yours work correct in mine? Yeah. Has, has anybody else had this problem or is everybody else this working right So I think in the export, the last step. Uh -huh. It has a settings state that state the files to Excel. Oh, got it. Yes. Okay. okay, so I would save this to the default. You have an option to the default out default output folder. It was just normally you, you change that. One difference also between the way that we just process the tissue and the way we process the cells is in the cells we count and pump it. these all the outputs that should be there. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let you take over with your R script right now. Oh. Okay. Do, who, do any of you guys use Malloc? Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Alright, take over. You can shut self profiler down. It's fine. Go on. Are you on a switch? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to process one and show you in MATLAB what it looks like when you map back. Because in R, um, R has very primitive image uh, analysis stuff. It's great for doing statistical analysis and you can make heat maps, but it has really bad um, image processing uh, capabilities. MATLAB is really good for that. And so I wrote scripts in MATLAB, is what I you know, comfortably know well, um, to map back the color assignments from the heat map back onto the image. and I can circulate to the, you, those to you guys, but we'll, obviously since you don't use MATLAB, I won't be so valuable. Um, 
but I'll try to figure out how to do it inside your cell profiler and send it to you guys so, you, so that, that that obviously would be more convenient. So, so that you know, so cell profiler is drawing those colored circles, but it's not drawing it according to the assignment that came out of a heat map, which is what ultimately you want. It's like each circle to correspond to that cell type that was inferred from the heat map. But I'll do one in MATLAB right now so you guys can look at it. And then. This CSP file has a list of intensity values. It measures like mean intensities, median intensities. If you scroll all the way to here, to the column it says uh, AI, not AI, AJ. So that has mean intensity measurements for one of the in-situ probes. So you guys can have the values for all four here. So right now I don't have a way to do it, but there is a way to do it. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. 
Yeah, the only issue is that I've written scripts to do it in MATLAB. Yeah. So if, if you if you have any facilities in MATLAB, you can just take the scripts and it's no problem. You can describe how to use them. Um, but most of you guys don't have MATLAB, so.